بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيد الأولين والآخرين سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي الأمين صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ومن دعا بدعوته واستنى بسنته واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك رب أن يحضرون تبرأت من حولي وقوتي واعتصمت بحول الله وقوته فلا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers and sisters, welcome all to this uh, final episode in our series titled Transform My Fast. Now, we haven't uh, stuck uh, exclusively uh, to the subject of fasting because fasting is one of many obligatory acts of worship. We live in an age where everybody is after smart devices, smartphone, smart TV, smart fridge, smart house, smart car. Everybody, everybody wants something that is smart. And what is the smart device uh, intended to produce? It's intended to create convenience, to create ease. But what's ironic is that while our devices get smarter, we, we actually start to degrade ourselves. And so, the smarter the phone, the more the sins we, we commit with it. And so that's not a smart act. The smarter the TV, the more the evil TV shows, the, 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 the evil sinful things are that we watch. And so that's not a smart act. And so we have degraded ourselves. The smartphone, I mean, what are phones for? They're supposed to uh, create ease through communication easy communication between us. And what's ironic is the opposite has happened. That the husband and the wife are further, who are closest to each other, closer to each other than any two people, are so far away, each on their device. The parent, the father, the mother and the child are far away, each person is on a device. And so that's not very smart. But we always look for uh, we always look for what is uh, the latest technology, what is uh, the upgrade on the last year. But unfortunately, we downgrade ourselves. We degrade ourselves. But we as human beings, we search for ease. We search for convenience. And we search for what is smart. Everybody wants shortcuts. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody wants shortcuts. Of course, a shortcut that is uh, one that is not uh, unlawful, but meaning that you get maximum result for minimum effort. And so, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a mercy to all of creation. Allah ta'ala, he said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We only sent you as a mercy to al-alameen. And al-alameen, the worlds, are everything except Allah. As Ibn Abbas said, Al-Alameen is everything besides Allah. So the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi is a mercy to everyone. He's a mercy to the humans, he's a mercy to the animals, he's a mercy to the plants, he's a mercy to the planet, he's a mercy to the universe. He's a, he's a mercy to the old and the young, he's a mercy to the active and the lazy. He's a mercy to everyone. And so the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructed us by saying, Yassiru wa la tu'assiru. Make things easy and don't make things difficult. Don't make things complicated. So for example, when delivering a bayan, a khutbah, a talk, or whatever, it's not a competition. It's not an exam. You don't need to show off what you have learned and all of this. Make things simple for people. This is the sunnah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also, if you want to seek Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if you want to uh, reach the high ranks with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, one should also make things easy as well. It shouldn't be a complicated process. And so, so many people, they ask, how can I reach Jannah? And some answers, you need to study, you need to seek knowledge, you need to do lots of nafl, 
lots of nafil salah, tahajjud, you need to do shiraq, you need to do awabin, you need to do uh, lots of dhikr, lots of different awrad, lots of this, you do khalwa, lots of different worship, give lots of sadaqah, tatawwa. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he knows that there are people who are happy with a pass. Some people at university, you know, uh, they wanted the highest grades, first class with honours, this, that, you know, I want to receive an award for being, you know, for having the best attendance, the best this, and other people are happy with the pass. And there are people among the Muslims, those who want really high levels, and there are people who say, you know, I just want to pass, I just want to pass, I, I just want to go heaven and I don't want to go hell. And there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is if we say, oh, you're not ambitious, you know, if the person is the person is not active, so what? Does it mean that he has to be pessimistic then? Oh, you can't be the highest level wali. Doesn't mean you become a low level wali of shaitan. Yeah. And so the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's as though he said to the ummah, all those who want to do lots of ibadah, Lots of tilawah of Qur'an, lots of dhik, lots of tahajjud, lots of, lots of sadaqah, lots of da'wah. You, you come to one side. And those who don't want to do any of that and still want Jannah, come to another side. Most people are on that, on, are on that side. So what, do, what did the Rasul give us all? Which is the minimum. It's the bare minimum. But it has maximum reward. Because we said we are all looking for you know, to be smart. And to be smart is to seek convenience, to seek ease, to get maximum results for minimum effort. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have mentioned time and again, Allah does not benefit from our worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to impose on us lots and lots and lots of voluntary worship. Because there's a reason why it's voluntary. It means you do it out of your own will and accord. You don't have to do it. But what do you have to do? After the obligations, after having sound aqidah, sound belief, and offering your, your fara'id, offering your, the, the obligatory salah, the zakah, if you meet the conditions, that you offer hajj when you're able to, financially able to, that you fast in the month of Ramadan, yes, and other obligations of course, but the other obligations you'll find fall into this category. And so what did the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he say? He said to Abu Dhar radiallahu an, Abu Dhar, shall I not inform you of two qualities that are lighter on the back and heavier on the scales than anything else but them? Lighter on the back, meaning that they're not difficult to do. Is it, is it tahajjud? Is it ishraq? Is it adhkaru sabah? Adhkaru masah? Is it sadaqah? Is it da'wah? Is it jihad? Is it this? No, it's none of those. All of those require effort. And there are people who are active, they can put in the effort. Well, people are not. So, what are they? What are they? They're light on the back, but they're heavy on the scales. They're heavier on the scales than anything else. These two qualities. And so Abu Dhar, he's in anticipation. Tell me, O Messenger of Allah. Yes, of course, I'd love to know what these are. And so he said to him, the first thing was alayka bi husni khuluq You must observe good character. Good character. And what is good character? What is husni khuluq Good character is that you, uh, people, when they meet you, after they leave, they're in a better state than before they met you. That you bring people comfort. You bring people ease. You bring people happiness, you bring people joy, you bring people convenience. You don't bring to people despair and sadness and hopelessness, yes, and grief and anxiety. That you bring people comfort and joy. Husnul khuluq. That the person, he uh, longs to see you, wishes to see you, misses you. When you leave, they're sad that you leave them. That's a person who has observed husn al-khuluq, good manners, good character, good character. And good character, subhanAllah, it is something that everyone can benefit from, benefit from. So we don't all, we can't benefit everybody with money. 
We can't even benefit everyone with da'wah. But what we can benefit people with is good manners. We can all benefit people with good manners. It can be with a smile. It can be with soft speech, a gentle tone, just general help. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah described him as, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him as having khuluqin azim, the best, greatest manners, the best, greatest character. Look at this example of how the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without any da'wah, with his manners, makes an enemy or a hostile or a, a detractor or an opponent a friend, an ally, and a Muslim. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa found an, old, an elderly woman. She's, she's struggling to carry her bags. So he says, oh mother, can I help you? And she said, yes, all the people over here are not helping me. She's at like, you know, like a bus station or train station. There she's at the camel station, right, for travel. So he says, uh, where are you going? She said, oh, I'm, I'm leaving Mecca. And he said, khair, why? And she said, oh, there's this man called Muhammad. He's come and he's claiming to be a prophet. And he is splitting the ho he's splitting homes. He is uh, turning father against son and son against father, husband against wife, wife against husband. And, uh, you know, and I want to leave this place. It's just become unbearable. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't say anything. He helps carry her bags, takes, walks her, right, until basically like, you know, if you like the, destin the, the departure point. Huh? And the whole time he's speaking to her nicely. It's not an act. That's how he was, sallallahu alayhi wa He knew no other way. And so at the end, she said, oh, you know, you're better than everyone here. Nobody helped me except you. What's your name? And so the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa he said, my name is Muhammad. And the woman is stunned, an elderly woman. She just said this and that about the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But she just saw his character. His character shone through the darkness of the lies and falsehoods and accusations made against him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so she could only accept that he is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she said ashhadu annaka rasulullah i declare that you are the messenger of allah nobody can do this except somebody who is who is sadiq who is truthful so good manners good manners good character is heavier, or is light, it's easy. Is it difficult to smell? <laughs> it's not difficult to smell. It's light, it's easy to do. Everybody benefits from it. And then the second thing that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said was, long wa alayka bitul samt And observe long periods of silence. Long periods of silence, meaning that you, you are known for not being talkative. You're known for being quiet. The silence of the tongue, the silence of the mouth from evil speech, from sinful speech, from destructive speech. It's also the silence of, you know, because the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying something everyone can understand, but there are depths to the meanings. Silence of the nafs from evil desires. Silence of the heart from evil qualities and evil morals and immorality. Silence of the mind from sinful thoughts. And so silence, long periods of silence, really is, really is one of the great, it is the heaviest thing on the scales. Look at these two. They're heavier than tahajjud. They're heavier than, uh, they're heavier than awabin. They're heavier than Ishraq. They're heavier than Tilawa of Quran. They're heavier than Sadaqah. They're heavier than Da'wah. Meaning for the one who does all of these things but doesn't observe long periods of silence, the one whose tongue is not restrained, is not controlled, but does all of these things, then the person who doesn't do any of these things, his reward is greater. His scale is heavier because the Rasul emphasized. He says, فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ He's stressing, 
by the one in whose hands is my soul. مَا عَمِلَ الْخَلَائِقُ بِمِثْلِهِمَا The creation cannot match these two a'mal. And that's the thing, they're a'mal. People, say, people think that if you're just polite, you're nice, you know, you're quiet, you're passive, you're inactive, you don't do anything. But the Rasul described them as a'mal. These are a'mal. These are the best a'mal that you can do, the best deeds that you can do. Good character, good character, and long periods of silence. Because if somebody prays tahajjud, gives sadaqah, you know, uh, leads people in salah or whatever, it doesn't matter. If they backbite, if they're harsh in their tone, if, they are, if they're vulgar in their speech, then the person who, is, who observes silence, who has good character, and is sleeping away in bed snoring, not praying to Hajjud, he's in a better state. This Ramadan, like every other Ramadan, people say, oh, Taraweeh, Tahajjud, read lots of Quran, but how many of us are thinking about actually what is more important than all of these? What is more rewarding? What is more loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is, what is most reflective of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's character? Good character. Good character. And long periods of silence. Uh, our uh, uh, Sayyiduna uh, 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 Samura ibn Jundub was asked, by one of the younger companions who didn't spend much time with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, uh, lana, like explain, describe to us, how was the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? All of us want to know that, right? Describe to us, how was the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So he said, Kana tawilu samti. He used to be silent for long periods of time. And, walayinu uh, al-kalam. Uh, uh, and he was soft and gentle in his speech, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you know what the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't speak much. When he he would sit with the companions, ten minutes, twenty minutes, half an hour, wouldn't say anything. The companions would talk among one another, recall the days of jahiliyyah, recall you know this poetry, talk about things, laugh, have a laugh as well. And what they have is the presence of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, smiling nodding his head, yes. And you know why people say, oh, why, is he so, why, was the, the, why was the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi quiet for? Because his heart was in connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. His heart wasn't silent, his heart was in constant communion with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But because our hearts are disconnected from Allah, we need our tongues to be connected with uh, and engaged in speech with others. Who is the wisest? Ahkamul Hakimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the infinitely wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not spoken to mankind, meaning through revelation, for 1400 years. Allah, of course, speaks to his angels and gives them instructions and speaks to the martyrs and the salihin and those in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the prophets, yes. But through revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not spoken for 1400 years. Allah could have continued to reveal the Qur'an and it would have been millions and millions of volumes. But look, small, it's brief, and it's sufficient. It's sufficient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even during the revelation of the Qur'an, a month would pass sometimes. Even six months passed uh, before Surah Al-Duha was revealed. But sometimes a month would pass and nothing is revealed. To create longing, to create an urge, a yearning from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions. And then what would come? Three verses, five verses, yes. And so we learn from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We reflect that quality. We reflect that quality of speaking when there is a need. And of course the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only spoke when there was a need. And he was silent when silence was better than speaking. But us today, we talk so much, we get ourselves into trouble, we get our families into trouble, we get our friends into trouble. Why? Why? We have turned matters upside down. The norms have been reversed. In the past, people were quiet. And if they spoke too much, people say, what's wrong with this person? He speaks too much. Today, 
People talk so much, and then when they're quiet, people say, oh, is he all right? This is, uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves nothing more than us observing good character and long periods of silence. Long periods of silence. These are the, if you like, the, the good deeds of even the, of even the, the, the lazy. And so if you don't want to do a lot, you can't do a lot. Many of our sisters, for example, can't do a lot because they have children and, and they regret it. Oh, I, you know, I've had kids back to back. I've missed so many Ramadans. I haven't gone to Tahajjud. I haven't gone to Taraweeh. I don't get to go to the Iftars. I don't do this. I don't do that. I'm not able to finish Khatm in Quran. But what's your character like? Are you harming people? Are you causing inconvenience to people? Are you causing discomfort to people? Or are you bringing people ease and comfort and happiness and joy? And, and the most worthy people are your family, obviously, to start with. How's your tongue during the month of Ramadan and outside of the month of Ramadan? Are you on the phone backbiting about your sister-in-law? Talking about your in-laws? Complaining about this and about that? And meddling in people's business? You know, as an imam in a mosque, the majority of the of the, the, the questions and inquiries and is all about marriage and divorce and it's always because people are unable to control their tongue they're unable to control their tongue oh Imam Saab I divorced my wife three times what do I do you should have controlled your tongue and when people do observe silence they do so to torture one another I'm giving him the silent treatment no you should have practiced that silence before you got into this situation. And so it is the most effective way of mending relationships. The most effective way of preserving and maintaining the relationship. You know, you should preserve and maintain. And if something occurs, the way to resolve matters is also through silence. Not a mudslinging competition, because that's what it takes. Two disputing parties will sit before the Imam, before the Sheikh, before the Mufti and what they're doing is they're just slinging mud at each other. What's better is silence. Because silence is what saves you. Uh, Ubaid ibn Samit, radiyallahu anhu, the noble companion, he asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, O Messenger of Allah, he said, Man naja? What is... Uh, what is salvation? This, meaning, what will bring me salvation? What will say, that's the question everybody asks. Uh, Shaykh, how can I go to paradise? And how can I make sure I don't go to hell? The Rasul he said to him, Hold on to this. Hold on to this. Amsik alayka lisanak. Hold on, he said, restrain your tongue. And be content with your home. Meaning, don't look to what other people have and be satisfied with what you have. And cry over your sins. Don't cry over this person does this. Oh, these people, they do shirk, they do bid'ah, whatever. And you have no idea what you're talking about. These people, there's a problem with their aqidah. And you have read a little pamphlet on aqidah and you're talking about people's aqidah. Cry over your sins and leave other people. But what we do is we look to other people's sins, and if there are no sins, we invent sins. But what is the key here is that you hold on and restrain your tongue. And so this Ramadan is not about, and I think we've, we're about to enter the last 10 nights, it's not about going to the mosque, packing out the mosque, pushing the person to your right, pushing the person to your left, shouting and arguing and crying and, and, and fighting with one another. Honestly, sometimes the last 10 nights especially, the last 10 nights become the worst 10 nights. For who? For us, because of the sins that we bring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house. Better for you to stay at home. Don't hurt anyone, don't harm anyone, and don't speak except when you say good words. And as they say, well actually it's a hadith, whoever believes in Allah in the final day, let him say good or remain silent. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who say to people husna, good words. And if we aren't able to say husna, then we remain silent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast and accept our qiyam and tilawah of Qur'an and grant us these two great qualities. Good character 
and long periods of silence. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum.